Hello, everybody, and welcome to, to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California, and we are still in the midst of lockdown in this crazy COVID-19 situation. And today's session, I wanted to spend some time on, on the situation that's going on in industry right now and to help with some uh, you know, tips and tricks that might help uh, people who are looking for jobs uh, to match them with the profiles or with the positions that are of interest to them. It really deeply pains me to see how amidst all of this uh, confusion, such capable engineers are having a hard time finding an ideal match for a job that they want. And among all of the tips and trades uh, that, I, that I have acquired over these years, over academia as well as industry, uh, I think I can help with at least the planning part of it and at least to help uh, help you, you know, imagine and, and to prepare you for these steps coming forward. So let's get right to them. Step number one, and the most important one of them all, research and planning. So you need to figure out what are the jobs that are of interest to you, but also that match your skill set. And if there is something that is aspirational, you can actually plan towards getting those skill sets acquired, in, let's say, in the next two to three months. So I can even show you how to go about doing that. Step number two, expertise and skill identification. You need to find what is your strong suit. As we always give an example of, of uh, cricket, which is popular sport in India, you need to play to your advantage. You need to know what are the things you are good at, you are strong at, and you need to build your skill towards those profiles that you're interested in. And finally, you need to build your profile digitally with examples. So it's, it's not just good enough for you to know everything, to be able to crack the coding interview on that day. That's important for sure. But then you also need to give the evidence that you have done, uh, you have experience, you have done examples in that particular domain so that you get your foot into the door. So you need to build your digital profile that has those examples. So let's get right to them. So I am looking at my, my LinkedIn so I can show you how to do a search in LinkedIn. So let's say that you are searching for a role, which is machine learning engineer, and you click search, right? Um, you might have to go into jobs, and then these would be all the machine learning engineering jobs that pop up. Now, I want to put a disclaimer here that I'm not working for, for uh, LinkedIn and I'm not endorsing LinkedIn in any way. It is just one of the tools that I found is, is very useful. So that's what I'm sharing today. So now let's see that these are all the engineering uh, roles that have, that have popped up. Now let's go over the skill sets that, that they're looking at. One thing that is very important to, to notice here is, uh, uh, and this was a, a tip that, that I acquired, whenever you see a lot of bullet points, so you might see that there are like five or six bullet points, the more bullet points you can actually hit means the higher the chance you could actually be a, a, a suitable match for this particular role. So at least you would uh, get a higher probability of getting an interview call. So let's see, uh, of course, it's, you know, PhD and NMS and, and all of that is there. So these are all your, you know, uh, qualifications that, that come with the job. But let's look at some of the skill sets. They're looking at digital camera signal processing, machine learning, contest content based image analysis, object segmentation. Uh, and also do, do look at here, it's C, C++, and Python. So now if you are someone who doesn't have a lot of experience in either one of them, you might figure out that that's a skill you need to acquire. And I know uh, you know, uh, programming language is just another language, but hey, that's what you need to do your day-to-day -day job. You need to acquire that skill. Nowadays, I'm seeing this trend towards uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch. So maybe that's an, an important uh, uh, qualification or skill set that you need as well. So let's look at a few other uh, examples as well. So then we're looking at, at NVIDIA and here we again see Python uh, is, is definitely important. Problem solving is, is definitely important. Uh, they see you, you, you have to have uh, experiences with Kubernetes, Hadoop and Spark ecosystem. 
C, C++, again, drives up uh, very important. So you see there's, there's a, a propensity for the C, C++ language going forward. So if that is a language that you want to, to you are thinking of anyways, then this would give you impetus to actually spend some time learning C, C++ and, and brushing that up as, as well, as good as possible. Uh, let's look at a couple of more to give an uh, example. So here, this one has, has a larger importance on A-B testing and analytics, but not specifically any language per se. Um, and then uh, another one, again, so some of, of the job distribution, job, job codes would give you uh, specifically languages and skill sets, and some may not, which is a little more uh, broader. But then, uh, you just need to come up with, with these recurring patterns. Like again, you see here, it says strong programming skills in C, C++ and, and Python, MapReduce, Flume, et cetera. And here the, they also require uh, some expertise in computer vision, robotics, reinforcement learning, uh, and SLAM and so on and so forth. So now you understand these are the keywords that you're packing up in your bag that you then would want to show. So that is a part of your step number one where you're doing your research and planning. And now that you have your skills that you have identified, how would you go about, you know, forming uh, your, your skills and then showing that to the world? One very good way of doing that would be creating a, a GitHub. And again, I, I, I want to mention a disclaimer that I'm actually not working for GitHub or for any other company. There's no endorsement here. I just find this as a useful tool. And that's what I use. So all you would need to do is just sign up on, on GitHub. And I wanted to present here, this is one way, this was one of the student engineering projects that happened last year. I will link uh, the, the, the link to this, uh, to this project below in the description box for anyone to find out. But you can actually go over uh, what needs to be in the GitHub. Uh, what you could do is you can start from what, what some, someone else has done, and then you can actually uh, download uh, these, these uh, you know, whole, whole programs, run them on your own, but only upload that to your own GitHub and make it public if you have made original contributions. So make sure you don't, and, and plagiarism is, is real people, so don't take it lightly. As a faculty member, I cannot stress enough. So don't, don't go into plagiarism. Make sure that you have your original uh, content into it. And nowadays, GitHub also allows you to have your own very own web page. So try to create your own web page where you can actually showcase all of your information to, uh, to, you know, together. So this is an example of how I build my, my web page in, in Google Sites. And uh, here, each and every uh, project is actually given its, its separate page where you can actually add or embed links uh, to go uh, into each and every one of them. So this way, you can actually demonstrate you have real world experience doing these problems. So hope you find them helpful and use them.